What we're reviewing today might be the smallest device we've ever done, but it's also potentially the most impactful. This is the Shure MVX2U. And what this little device that looks like a cigarette lighter adapter does, it takes any XLR microphone and turns it into a USB microphone. In the box, there's not a whole lot, seeing as the device is quite small itself. You have the MVX2U, a USB-C to USB-C cable, and the documentation. So when you look at the device, it's important to know it's not a cheap plastic. It's a really nice solid metal material. So you don't have to worry about any kind of wear and tear. On one end of the MVX2U, you have the female XLR connectors. And on the other side, you have your USB-C port and a headphone jack for zero latency monitoring. So the concept of this couldn't be simpler. You just simply plug this end into any XLR microphone that you have, then connect the microphone to your computer via this end. But why visualize it when we can just do it? So let's get it set up. Okay, so the setup didn't take quite as long as I thought. But you can see we're all set up here. We're on the Shure SM7DB and you can see how cleanly it actually lines up with this design. It makes sense because Shure designing for Shure, of course, it's gonna look nice. It's not gonna line up exactly all pretty for every XLR microphone, but it is supposed to work and we'll test that in a little bit. Now with the headphones plugged directly into the MVX2U, I can hear myself quite clearly. There's no way on here though for you to adjust the volume or the gain or anything like that on the microphone. So the next thing we have to do is go to Shure's Motive software and check that out. And here's a quick look at what this software looks like. It's a very, very simplistic software. It's not a mixer or anything like that. It's just going to give you some controls over the microphone itself. So you can see up here, it's connected to the MVX2U. If you have any of Shure's other microphones that connect via USB, you'll also be able to do that. The MV7, for example. So when we look at the auto levels first, you can see that there's just very simplistic options here. There's not a whole lot for you to kind of manipulate yourself. First, you're just going to choose whether or not you're near or far from the microphone. So that's just going to adjust your gain because this is set up like this. I would select near if it was something like being on my desk. I would select far, like so. Then here we just have our tones, so there's not a whole lot of EQ going on. You're just basically selecting a preset. So this is the dark preset. This would be your natural preset, and this would be the bright preset. You can hear those slight changes, but I'm also hearing a lot of background noise right now. And the main reason for that is this gain. So the gain is a little bit rough in the auto version. So this is the louder because I needed it to be. If you go, to you can see it gets considerably quieter at this level. But if you're so inclined to keep things auto, you could do something like I just did right now and just apply a filter to it. So I'm using NVIDIA's noise removal on OBS to be able to record this without having all the excess noise. As we scroll down more, we have a few more options. So you have your phantom power right here. This is for any condenser microphones you might hook up to this. There is a warning for you though, at least against older dynamic microphones. There's a lot of older microphones where if you apply the phantom power, you can actually damage the microphone. They've corrected that for newer stuff. I would still wouldn't take the risk anyways, but for condenser you absolutely need to have this to get it working. Mic mute, you just toggle. And then turn it back off. And then down here's your monitor mix. So this is actually where you would balance how much you want to hear of your mic versus how much you want to hear in playback. So you can send anything from your computer directly to this, like any other USB microphone. And to my knowledge, this is the only way you can really control any kind of volume going to your headphones in terms of the microphone, because when I had this all the way over to mic, my vocals were just blasting in my ears. So I needed to back it off. So I did this. So when you go to manual, you're going to see a bunch of settings that you didn't see in the previous version, which is obvious. But the first thing you're going to see, which is a little ironic, is pre presets, not a very manual thing. But if you go into presets, you'll see a bunch of different ones. You can actually create presets. So if you'd set up all your things and then save one, you could do that because if you have different people using vocals on that, you might want to be able to do that. But it does have some really, really simplistic ones. So in this case, we're using a dynamic microphone and I'm doing speech instead of singing. So if I just did that, it makes a few quick changes for me. You notice it didn't do anything with the equalizer, but it did adjust the gain, which just looking at my levels, I need to bump up a little bit more than that. So yeah, I pretty much have to bring this all the way up. The monitor mix, it's the same as it was in the auto level. Then you get to a little five band equalizer here, which is kind of nice. So obviously your low frequency over here and your high frequency over here. So if you want to make little adjustments, you just simply mess around with these and create what you would find to be your ideal setup. It's very tough because it's not really showing you. I'm assuming these are one dB increments at a time here. And just a little California smile. You can't do a lot of fine tuning with this one, but I mean, given the fact that it's giving us an XLR microphone and turning it into a processed USB microphone, I mean, beggars can't always be choosers. I'd like to see this improve in the future though. And then with the five band EQ, you can also turn any of these bands off and then create a little bit more of a smooth transition into the next thing. Next down here, you got a high pass filter, which is very nice. Now the thing about this high pass 
pass filter is you don't know exactly where you're going to need to adjust this to kind of remove some of that low hum that you're trying to get rid of. So what I would suggest is actually do a little test recording of yourself and put it somewhere where you can actually see the audio so you can see all the wavelengths and stuff and do it while you're talking and while you're silent so you can kind of pinpoint what frequencies these things are at. Then you can adjust this to another little test recording and then see that you've improved it. You've got a limiter here, but there's really not much to it. All you can do is toggle it on and off. So I'll just toggle it on just in case I decide to get too loud and clippy for you. And then you have a really simplistic compressor here. Again, as somebody who actually likes to kind of manipulate that stuff, I know that I like a four to one compression ratio. I know my attack and release times, all the things that I like that make me sound as good as I can considering. So I don't know what these things mean. It would take a lot of test recording and changing a lot of settings to kind of figure out what would line up exactly for me. I don't like doing the settings on the fly while I'm trying to listen to myself in the headphones because I don't think that's the best way of going about it. You can hear notable differences, but you're not hearing the exact output that you want to hear. So always record and then go back and check it out later. It's actually something that's missing from this software that exists on a lot of similar software is the ability to record yourself, talk for a second, and then play back so you can listen and then you can just be making those adjustments right then and there rather than creating a whole separate recording going playing that and then going back and changing in the software it's just all in one place that way it's a lot easier the one thing that does bum me out though is we've tested this software before in the mv7 and they haven't made a whole lot of improvements to it since then there's a lot that you could do with these softwares so many different companies out there are showing you things they can do logitech's g hub software with the blue voice settings and stuff like that that's all really good beacon software is fantastic obviously elgato's is really good Rose software is great and don't get me wrong this is a really good start but we've been at this for a while now I feel like they could have done a little bit more and they could start adding more things to it maybe add some mixing to this software and have a little bit more of a complete solution <laughs> So now we're hooked up to my OG, one of the first microphones I ever actually bought for content creation. This is my Rode pod mic. And yes, I own a Rode pod mic USB, but it already has USB. So to hook this in via XLR and then go back to USB, it felt kind of like a hat on a hat on a hat kind of situation. So despite the fact that we're obviously not using a Shure microphone at this point, it's still going through the Shure Motive software because that's how everything runs through this little guy. And speaking of that, you can see how it's set up here, how it's just sticking out of the end. Not much of a distraction by any means, but you might not like the way that the cables run down this way because now they're kind of running down in front of me. So what you may want to do in that case is actually just flip it up like so. And then you'd just be able to run your cables down the mic arm a little bit more naturally. But that's really a matter of preference. But I'm just thinking of all of the situations that this is so great for. Imagine you have an old audio interface that's dying out and you don't want to replace it with the next big expensive thing. You just want to keep it really simple and bring it right to your computer. It just does not get simpler than this. Now, in terms of pricing, the Shure MVX2U is $129 US. And if you want a little comparison, the Elgato Wave XLR is only about $10 more expensive than this. And obviously going that route offers you a lot in terms of integration you have your wavelength software you've got the ability to hook up with your stream deck so there's a lot of advantages to that one but if you don't want an extra thing on your desk or you just simply want your XLR microphone to be a plug-and-play USB microphone this is the way to go because if that's all you need there's simply no point in spending extra money for the bells and whistles I want to thank sure for sending me the MVX to you they didn't pay me for any kind of review I'm just doing this in my own free will which I feel like was obvious but why don't you take a second to tell me what you really think about the MVX to you by going down in the the comments and if you're more of a show don't tell person then hit the like and subscribe ring that bell so you know when I have new videos coming out and if you happen to be the kind of person who wants to comment and do all those things well you don't like win anything per se but I feel like you'll feel like a winner my advice try it out you got nothing to lose thank you so much for watching and why don't you check out one of these videos with different audio interfaces that I've checked out in the past we got these two things here make sure you subscribe to those and until next time my friends let's get to work